Oh, what's happening, everybody? It's Mikey Wine, a.k.a. Gundamonium Works, and we're live. Sorry I missed you last week. Uh, getting back in to the, to the groove. Going to start, uh, going to do a couple things tonight. I'm going to talk about the completion of the M1A1 Abrams, which is right here in front of me, and then uh, started a new project, which is the 148 scale resin cast Macross uh, Tomahawk from Moscato Hobby Models. And you can see some of the parts in front of you here. And there's a lot of work, a lot of cleanup work. I've soaked everything. I did it all, soaked everything in purple power and cleaned all that. Did all the that portion of it. But there's a lot of cleanup as far as the parts themselves and the molds. And I'll give you a review on what I think so far, considering what I've seen, the way the casts were done, or the quality of the cast, uh, some of the defects I've found, and some of the things have been fixed so we'll get into that later but first things first we're going to talk about this guy because i'm done I'm done with this and i'm super happy the way it turned out i think if i had a recommendation for anybody for building one of these things i would say invest in a stowage kit it just completes the whole thing it makes it so much more realistic and believable what's up george Yo, 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 bro. <laughs> Good to have you in. Thanks for joining, buddy. Uh, I'm just going to talk about this guy because it's finished for a brief moment, and then we'll get on to the tomahawk and what I have put together so far. It's pretty big. It's a pretty massive kit. I've, I've glued some parts together. There's some of the stuff that I, some of the, some gaps I had to fix, some air bubbles and stuff like that uh the stowage really fits yeah i was well, i was just talking about it. i was just recommending it i was just saying if you're going to do a tank or something like this the stowage kit whether it's resin or plastic uh molded stuff it just adds such a level of realism to it anyway i'm going to get to bring this up a little bit closer and we'll just kind of turn it around so you can see everything uh at a little bit closer level without flipping it over but there's all the stowage back there there's even my little little urine bottle hanging out hope you do more armor in the future <laughs> you know i just like i said i think we talked about this george i think the next time if i do an armor kit it's going to be a, a, a gundam main battle tank or maybe the hover tank or something like that this was fun though it was it was uh a learning experience too, but I think you know by adding the photo etch to it and the stowage really helped a lot because this is a pretty old kit. I can't remember when it was manufactured, but I think it was in the nineties. Um, but yeah, the resin, uh, these little uh, traffic cones came with the the stowage kit as well. So I added those for a little bit of a little bit of texture, a little detail in the in the. As far as the uh, real armor, Mike. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's got to be a modern tank or something like that. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> it's got to be real armor. Whatever, man. <laughs> I don't have any more, though. That's just it. This was given to me by a friend of mine who said he would never build it. And, you know, it was funny because I, I think I shared this before, but when I was talking to him, I was, this is when I lived in California. And I remember telling him, if I was ever going to build a modern armored kit, it would be a, an M1A1 Abrams tank. And he, <laughs> he took me out to his garage, and he reaches into this stack of stuff and just goes, here you go. I'm never going to build this, and hands me this model kit. He'd had it for years and gave it to me, and then I finally got around to building it. So, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm super stoked with the, the way that the stowage came out and all the details that it added to it. So we're done. This one's uh, going to stay in the cabinet until next IPMS show that I attend, and then I'll, we'll see what it does there. I'll put it on display, see if I can uh, pull something out. I don't know. I don't. I don't expect to win any, you know, any awards with this, but I think it's pretty good enough to put on a table. You know, 
anyway, uh, also got a couple little water bottles there too on each side for the crew. I like those little details, those little things. People that, you know, the, the initial look of the model draws people in and then they start looking at all the little stuff. And that's when all those details, you know, those details, you go, oh my God, look at that, look at that. And you start looking a little closer and finding all those little cool things. So that's what it's about for me. I like being able to, to you know, kind of look over people's shoulder and, and listen to them talk about kits and what they see and, and whether or not. So anyway, we're going to put this back in the cabinet for now. I'm going to get on to current project, which is the 148 Tomahawk. And so far, it's pretty decent. Um, let's go one last go around here. And then we'll get on to it. So, all right, be right back. We're going to put this in the cabinet. Okay. So, this is what we're building, guys. Scott Hobby Models. Uh, and this is, I don't have a lot of experience with garage kits or resin kits that are from sculptors that sculpt their own models and and create molds and cast them themselves and, and sell them very low production stuff but so i don't have a lot to a lot of experience to compare it to but uh as far as the quality so far a lot of the details are pretty good i'm not disappointed at all about that you know like describing the panel lines and stuff like that it's really really nice but because it is such a low production uh, model kit. Hey, what's up, Nick? There are quite a few blemishes and defects, like air bubbles, uh, stuff like that, things that need to be uh, addressed when assembling it, just because there's no way they, they have to be fixed before you, you know, because they're, they'll be visible otherwise. One of them is actually, let me see, I think it's this piece here, yeah. This is one of the heel pieces for one of the feet. And there is a massive, massive, massive. I mean, I just pulled all that. You see that giant air bubble? Just massive. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. Huge, huge, huge air bubble. This all has to be filled. So I'm probably going to have to build that up with some CA glue. Uh, I might try just filling it with putty first. I, I typically don't use putty. I might use some epoxy putty or something. Maybe that would be a bit quicker. But this is some of the parts that I have here. Everything's been cleaned with Purple Power, scrubbed with a toothbrush, rinsed, and set to dry. And then I've started building. So what I actually have here, mostly assembled, and some of this stuff is just put together, is the most of the torso here. And this is about the size of my fist. I mean, that's how big this thing is. At the cockpit, um, I intend on having this in the open position. Right now, it's just in the closed position. You can open this up. There's a fully detailed cockpit, which I can show you here just by taking the, the lid off. Let's see. Let's get the seat in position. Okay, so there's there's the cockpit. These are just sitting on here, too. These are the hatches for the, the uh, missile pods. Those come off. So... There's the cockpit, and it looks like having built enough of the 148 scale uh, Macross Valkyries, he took the cockpit of a Valkyrie and just redesigned it, cut it down, and, and created his own uh, because the control panels, I, I recognize all the control panels and the seat, the that that's all from 148 Valkyries, and then he just built his own uh basically box around that for the cockpit so this is actually the piece that goes in front and this is like three um i guess like television screens that would be inside the cockpit for the pilot before i go any further let me talk about the pilot so there's a pilot figure that comes with this he's right here okay so if he's sitting in the seat pretty much be just like that i don't intend i don't plan on having him in the seat because of what i'm 
probably going to do is is order another pilot figure from Shapeways, that 148 scale one that I used for my previous Valkyrie project, and have them, you know, walking up to the to the disc right here. So I want the cockpit in an open position, ready for you know, ready for the guy. Whatever. Maybe build some scaffolding. I don't know. I haven't decided on that yet. But uh, so basically, those three screens would go if I put this in position so there there's the pilot sitting in the seat with those screens in front of him so the cockpit this piece here can be mounted closed or slit slit open so if it's in the open position it'll kind of be right around here so that's about all you get to see open with the cockpit can't really go much further forward i might be able to modify that this piece a little bit to to be able to extend that out further and make make the cockpit a little bit more visible but the way he's got this designed um it kind of kind of can't go any further than maybe that right there all right so for those eagle-eyed uh people out there you might be noticing some this white strip here this is one of those gap fixes I had to fix because when I glued these pieces together, there was a, or before I did, I, I noticed that there was going to be a gap here. So I fixed that with some plastic uh, strip, sanded it to match the, the geometry of it because the angles weren't, they weren't exactly straight. So I had to kind of bevel the edge to get that to fit together. But everything else is, is glued in. These, the missile uh, carriers are not glued in. They're just put in place because there's actually a pin for each shoulder that goes through that and so everything has to line up just perfectly so this these come off these are the arms so the shoulders shoulder section here this one's a little bit snugger but this is pretty much this solid piece and i've glued glued on the, the exhaust vents here the ray dome this piece i also had there's you can even see a couple of strips there those were some some gaps that i had to fill as well there was a giant air bubble on this main piece that was would show through that so i fixed that with some ca glue sanded it and then put a little strip on just to kind of cover it up all it's really going to do is just add a small little detail it won't even be noticeable really it was just so i didn't have that that gap and then there was a couple on either side of of this here that also kind of like right you can kind of see it right in there let's see uh, let me get the right angle there we go right in there there's a little piece of plastic strip on either side that fills in that gap so just little things like that uh as far as other little blemishes that on this there's not a whole lot there there like i said i'm finding some of them as i go um i'm following the instructions and in, in assembling pieces in, in in subsections right now i'm about ready to get to after this is done I can go to the legs and, and the torso and the lower torso here. I was going to glue the little ball joints in place for the hips, but there's a lot of supports here that were made for the casting process that I have to cut those off and uh, sand that all smooth. It's not supposed to be there. These these little ribs you can see are not not intended to remain. And then there's some standard cleanup with where the resin uh, was poured in. So if I do have any complaints, it's to some of the some of the molds, the way they were poured are inconsistent. Like you can see like this is the one of the leg portions here, and this is where everything was kind of poured in. There's enough here on top that that can be removed and sanded smooth and be perfect. But one of these sections, uh, in fact, it was this side. This is where those guns and stuff will mount later facing forward uh in these certain in these holes here but one of these was there was barely enough resin poured to fit in here and without a gap i, I when i sanded it smooth there was <laughs> there was really nothing left for error there and i also had to do some modifications to these to get these to fit around this circular geometry here because they would not line up with with the body lines without doing that so I've had to do some little little things here and there, but I kind of expected that. But so, would I recommend 
buying one of these? I mean, they're they're kind of pricey. Um, sure, if your modeling skills are up to it, absolutely. I think it would be it's going to come out nice. I'm going to make it look nice and everything like that. But I definitely, um, <coughs> excuse me, definitely could could you know? And, I, and I, it could be just because I got one of the later uh, the later molds because I know he only produces enough kits until the molds start to degrade and then he shuts off production so there's not that many out there available um, there's quite a huge like i'm talking about this you can see that giant air bubble so when i sand this off and then take this this is some of the casting here when i take that off this leg piece is supposed to be flat across the top there's just going to be two big holes there so it's almost like i think if 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 you're going to build this kind of stuff and sculpt it and I know that benefit molds tend to benefit from either using a pressure pot or some kind of a sonic you know a vibration or something like that to to work the air bubbles out of the molds and that way they're they're not leaving holes in your in your casts um anyway but i kind of i halfway expected there to be a lot of cleanup and he even you know he doesn't advertise it as a perfect thing he tells you that you need good skills Good modeling skills to build this kind of stuff so he's not wrong he's not wrong for sure but anyway i'm just going to be working on that tonight i'm, go I'm going to uh, be doing some sanding here i got to look at where i'm at i've got my instructions basically on the i downloaded them to to my phone so i've got everything that tells you step by step how to assemble everything so uh, I've got the torso pretty much together as far as as far as I can go without um, starting to you know prime some stuff. But one of the big things I, I wanted to show you, and we're talking about little uh, blemishes and defects. I'm going to have these these hatches in the open position, so they'll be kind of like kind of like that with all the with all the missiles exposed kind of cool i have i think i figured out one of these fits better on one side or the other i think this one fits better here uh but when they when he molded these the interior um the texture inside here is really kind of cool these hatches look really nice inside but there's such a thin spot in this back corner that it actually created an air bubble through the front. You can actually see the holes in each one of them. So I've got to fill those. You know, again, whatever. It is what it is. Um, but I kind of expected them to be just a little bit better than what they are. Um, but nothing I can't fix. Another thing I noticed, too, is that this resin, whatever he used, is very soft. Not too terrible. I mean, not not to the point where it's un, unworkable, but it's it's pretty soft compared to a couple of the resin dress-up kits that I've used in the past. So the nice part about that is is you can really sand it very quickly, you know, because it's it's you get an aggressive file or something like that, and you can really go to work quickly. The downside is is that you can sand it very quickly, and if you're not careful you actually might take more off than you want. So definitely got to uh, got to be careful when it comes to, like, especially some of these pieces that, like this here, that has to be flat on top. So when I, when I sand this down, I want to make sure I'm not taking off so much that that it's uh, affecting the, the actual finished kit. What I've got over here, these are just the glass pieces that also came with it. Uh, there's the main visor here, which glues in to the underside of the cockpit so that's going to go in something like that who has summoned me at this hour <laughs> come on chris it's only nine o'clock your time right is it are you eastern time zone i think you are i can't remember so i got a few lenses there that come with it um there is one that's going to go on top of the cockpit there are two that will go on each one of the knee 
uh, just in front of the knee portions. And then there's a couple of large ones, like one here for the spotlight. Uh, that one's going to go on here. And I think there's one. Might be. No, oh, that's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah, just the knees and that, that corner. I'm an old ass man now. Plus, you've been sick. Oh, come on, uh, Chris. You're not that. Well, come on. I'm in. I'm in my fifties, man, and I know George is too. So uh, you can't. You can't use the old. You can't pull the old man card out yet. Being sick is one thing. That sucks. Hope it's not COVID. But anyway, so I just put these together. This is one of the shoulder sections here. This is actually a pin. I'm going to push this out. This is actually a pin. It goes all the way through. That separates these. So I had to drill those out. I brought in some precision drill bits from work and had to uh, drill these out. I'm just pushing this out with a pencil eraser because I wanted them to be snug because I want these joints to be tight enough that I can still move them, but they're not just going to flop all around and be loose. You know, then then you got to start adding some CA glue or something like that. So that is the shoulders and all these have been sanded i had a pretty big uh you might be able to see it there on top right about right on this side there was another big hole air bubble there that i had to fill with some ca what's up angel angels in the house how you doing brother uh we got georgia crispy old yeah george says old you know he's laughing too so these, uh, these are the missile portions here. You just slide out, and you can see that, that cutout. That's where the shoulder goes through. So this has to be mounted at just the right depth for that shoulder pin to go back in. So it's, you got to be careful when you're gluing this stuff together. But what I'll probably do, since these are removable, is I'll paint these, because I think they're going to be a different color than the body. So I can paint these ahead of time and then glue them in place. But uh, so uh, everything else that's here, this is all one solid piece. All this is glued together. Nothing else. Actually, the only thing else that can be removed is the cockpit, the actual little bathtub here. But that's it. This has all been glued and is no longer going to be serviceable as far as like everything else. So you got a heat exchanger here, a couple of uh, exhaust vents. Those look nice now that they're they're trimmed and. And sanded and fit right in place. Nice and nice lines. Everything's uh, even. They look good. I got these two supports. Those are glued in. And then these carriers here that those are for all the, like I said, those are for the like machine guns and the missile tubes, all that, or the, the bigger guns that are underneath the, the cockpit. There's even a couple of them that go into the top of the cockpit here. Uh, but those are all in a pile here. So. I guess what I will do is I'm just going to start uh, cleaning up some of these parts. Um, I kind of want to do these tonight, the big uh, arm cannons. So we got two, two of these, and then there's a an exhaust piece that's going to go on the back. So I've got to sand all this off. They poured these in through the top, so uh, I've got to get them sanded down flush so they'll sit nice and, and then I can actually probably glue those in place. We'll go from there. Sound good, everybody? Wipe my palate. Cheers, everybody. Oh, oh yeah. Saw your saw your interview, George. You looked very comfortable talking uh, on camera. I must say, probably a little more than than I would be. I don't know. Maybe that was the any that was uh, with uh, uh, Mecca Warehouse, if I'm not mistaken, right? So I got all my sanding sticks over here and some files. I'm probably going to need this guy. This is my most aggressive half round. And I just usually, I, I, the reason I'm using this instead of a flat one is because this one has the most aggressive um, teeth on it, so to speak. And I can really take off a lot of material pretty fast because some of this stuff, like, like the bottom of this cockpit was just, it had an eighth of an inch of, of resin that needed to be removed. So it was just a matter of, you know, going back and forth and, and leather. What's what are we talking about? 
Blither. I blither. I don't know what that means. There we go. So I'm gonna make some dust now. Some pretty heavy dust. Looks like. Yeah, that's a little bit of a in the middle of a mold line, but that's gonna be covered up. It's not a huge deal. Like I said, I like the way this, I mean, it's just soft enough that you can really send it very quickly, but you have to be kind of uh, conscious of that and be, be aware that how quickly the material is going to go away. So you don't want to take up too much at once. And I have some chisels, too, that I've been using to, um, like these new ones I got from, USA Gundam store. They're really, really sharp. Just ask my thumb. Cut a big hole in one the other day. But they're really good for just taking off extra material. And because this is soft enough, it it's pretty easy. Is the model 100% new design, as in from the ground up? Let me put that on screen. That's a good question, George. I believe so. I don't think there's a 148 uh destroyed of any kind out there i mean we've been talking about moscato models this week and some of his stock photographs were not his own which is kind of uh disappointing to be sure it was a gusher blood what what are we talking about did i miss something it was a gusher, blood everywhere. What are we talking about, Angel? I don't know. I'm so confused. To look down for a second. Or... So I'm just cutting off some of this excess of the... Once I get down to it, I can use my chisels to do the rest. So, yeah, I, as far as I know, this is a, is a complete um, from the ground up construction um, I'm pretty sure the glouge that he's building is also um, from the ground up and that includes a pilot figure too if you buy it that way oh my thumb <laughs> no it actually didn't bleed too terribly bad I just super glued the damn thing before it got out of hand which is uh, yeah it's what you do when you yourself so i'm just gonna there's a little bit of a mold line here in the uneven surface so i'm just gonna take take a little bit of this off this stuff does make a lot of fine dust pretty easily so once i get down level here i'll show you what i'm talking about when i use my the file for because I'm going to take the bottom off of one of these and really grind some stuff off here. Lines? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to cut some lines. <laughs> Is that what we're talking about with the dust? I'm going to do some lines? No, no thanks. <laughs> there was a joke a few years ago about that, about when I, when I belong to uh, those Gundam guys were doing a promo for one of their shows and they were talking about <laughs> that kind of thing. The joke was that he's doing lines of, of resin dust. Just trying to even out this, this two because the mold line kind of leaves an irregular raised surface on one half of this back. So I'm just kind of trying to take it off. Get it as smooth as I can or as even as I can. Yeah, there's quite a bit here that needs to be cleaned up. The barrel's pretty nice. The barrel's nice and uniform. No mold lines on that one. I think they're the other side. Yeah, this one's got a little one here that I need to, to knock down. So like I said, I'm not sure where this one was creating the run of whatever he molded. You know, I'm sure if... if you get one of the earlier ones, 
you probably end up having less to, to clean up as far as some of these mold lines and stuff. Um, but uh, as that mold degrades, you're going to have uh, those little issues come, come up. But it'll be interesting to see when I get the, the next kit, because I did order the Glouge, the Commander pod, I, I did order that. That's in 172 scale, which will match fine with the Hasegawa uh, pods that I already have. But I'll see how those molds are. If they're consistent like this, then I'll know it's it's not really, may, may not necessarily be a, a, whatever time in the, in the production. It might just be the quality of his, 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 uh, his molds, just period. You know, they may not be the best. They're really good. Don't get me wrong. They are good. But if you're not uh, prepared to do a lot of cleanup, <laughs> I wouldn't buy one because there is quite a bit of it. And we're just going to get rid of that. So I pretty much got this back piece nice and smooth here. This is the back. Of, and then I'm going to knock this down so I can attach that on the back is the cannon shaking or is the image in? oh i'm i'm shaking because my camera is mounted on a tripod that's on my bench and as i'm moving it's probably shaking the camera sorry about that it's just standing yeah i didn't realize i'll try to lift my arms up off the table that'll that'll uh get rid of some of that there how's that that better because my arms are on the table and i'm shaking it i didn't even realize i was doing that i forget that my camera's not mounted off the table. It's on a tripod. So that's pretty good. That piece that's called, let's see what it's called here. Uh, da, 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 it's called a fume extractor. So this is the fume extractor. And I'm going to knock all this extra resin down. Uh, where's the other one? The other one, uh, there it is. So I got both of these to knock down. And uh, I'll show you what that process is going to be like. So, what's up, Do? Beautiful chat. How's it, how's it going? Are they numbered, uh, or so? Do they have an idea how many he'd gone through? I never asked him exactly how many he he did. I asked when I well, before I ordered this one, I asked him how many he had left, and it was basically maybe five or six or something like that. I think he was, but I'm not sure exactly how many he he produced. I do know that each one of these is signed, but I don't think there is a number anywhere on this. <laughs> yeah, there's a notice I was talking about. This is an unassembled resin construction kit for advanced modelers. It requires finishing, building, and painting. <laughs> it is not a toy. What's up, David? How you doing? How's... Uh, How's it going on your end of the world? So, I'm going to clean up these fume extractors. So this is where this is where it's gonna. It's probably gonna shake the camera. But I'm gonna go across this file and just start taking off some of this material. This is gonna create a lot of dust. This is where most people would say you need to have. A respirator or a mask or something because it does create quite a bit of dust but I'm trying to manage it by once I clean up a piece like this and I make a lot of dust I remove it and put it in the bin get it off the bench especially because I've got to clean out the file too the file gets saturated and doesn't work as well as it could so yeah see I still got a little bit more to go and so each time you do this you got to kind of inspect it and make sure you're filing down evenly if you start getting a little off you want to make sure you don't take off material you, you want to remain there so I will you'll see me rotate the piece every so often to kind of keep it going and make sure my my sanding is even this files nice and flat so 
What? Many, many. Oh shit, that rolled over on me. I think you'd be careful with that with a file like this. It's really gonna take off material. So if you push too hard at uh, the part tried to roll on me. So you can see how much I'm creating in just this one piece, and I haven't even knocked down that entire bit of resin on the back of it. At least this will be a nice flat, even uh surface when I'm done with it and I'll glue the back of that cannon nicely. Still going here. I'm going to get a little bit more rotating it to make sure I'm getting going down evenly. Yep. It also helps to have a an old toothbrush to clean your files out. This is just one little piece and all that dust. I have seen some guys that actually mount a, like a vacuum cleaner or something to the end of their bench. So when they're doing this, it just pulls all out. But I can't do that for the live streams, especially there would just be too much noise. You guys would be going, what? What's he saying? Maybe you can try wet sanding. Yeah, I suppose that's an option. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it. Only be, I think, just because uh, how soft this stuff is. I'm not sure. It just turn into like a dummy mess. This stuff is not that hard. It does sand very quickly, and that's why I'm taking my time because it's easy to let it. it and get away from you if you're just being too aggressive. Oops. So we're almost there. You can see the difference between before and after. That's after, and this is before. So there you go. Quite a bit. Quite a bit different. And almost there, I can see a little bit of that where they poured it in, just still there. So I've almost, almost gone completely flat. Once I can no longer see those, it's almost like you just see the wavy lines of of the resin pour. Once that's gone, I know I'm I've gone far enough down and it's really close right now because it's getting to the point where I'm just seeing only the the square plate nope. might be able to hear the dogs next door going at it <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that they always bark at each other in the fence my neighbors okay so that is complete now. That's nice and flat, really smooth, and it will go on here really nicely. And in fact, it fits almost perfectly. Might take a little bit off, but there's a little tab here on the back of it that helps you line this up. That's basically how that's going to go right on there might be a little bit of a seam as well but because it's bolted down it almost looks like an, an intentional seam it wouldn't hurt if there was a mole or a panel line there because it does look like this piece was bolted on the back of the, the arm so now i'm going to lift this up and clean, clean the files out here okay then bring up the trash can Clear off some dust. There, that's how we deal with that. 
Okay. Lather, rinse, repeat. Now let's do the other one. This is really nice. It came out good. As long as you just take your time, you know, just, just slowly but surely. So maybe just a little more, actually. I thought I was done, but I think I can get just a bit more. What am I missing? I'm trying to pay attention here. And get an extractor just to help some slight removal, but wet sanding resin is the 100% weighted. I mean, does they work? Well, that's good. I'm going to try it then. I'm going to try to, to do it right now because it's we're already in the middle of the show. But uh, during the week, I'll try that and see if there's a way. Uh, it's PETA. What's PETA? I'm not following. I'll see if I can uh, help myself out because it does get everywhere. I mean, that's why I'm trying to clean it up as I go rather than just letting it accumulate. You know, I do one piece and, and clean it. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So that one's done. Ready for number two. Get an extractor. Just to help with some slight removal, but what? Extractor. <laughs> okay, pain in the ass. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch the acronym. Yeah. <laughs> when you say extractor, I mean, I'm going to be gonna be stupid now and ask, what do you mean by extractor? <laughs> Initially, I'm just taking off the edges of that, of that uh, corner. There was quite a few, quite a few defects and blemishes on this kit so far. Still not a deal breaker, but like I said, if you're uh, if you're not ready, willing to uh, put in the work, then don't don't buy it because it's it is a, it is quite a bit of work. I mean, the majority of this is going to be cleanup. The painting process is easy. You know, this is the difference between these two molds. This one is already thinner. Like there wasn't as much of that material to, to grind off to get to that square plate where this uh, fume extractor is mounted. Dust extractor. This one's made specifically for the hobby. Oh, the gun primer. Okay. Let's put that on screen. Gun primer one. But there's also new art dust extractor. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't even think about like fingernails, Paul. Fingernail stuff like that, you know. Forget about those uh, other professions where I might use that stuff. So just trying to even out this this one now to make it match the other side. Just about there. It's almost perfect. All right. Whoa, that one flying. I got it. this one yeah that's a good fit okay so yeah here's here's an example I'm not sure you guys want to see this but you can see on this one here you see the little void that's still there that's because you know the, when the resin was pouring in it didn't fully fill up that that void 
So, but when I sanded this one smooth, it's completely smooth. Now it's not going to matter because these are both going to be glued down to a flat surface. So you won't even see that, but that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. There's these little inconsistencies with his, uh, you know, when he poured these molds or poured the resin in, he almost didn't wait to see that it fully, uh, fully filled up the mold. Because there's like a, a really big one on the uh, one of the leg pieces I showed earlier. There's a massive air bubble. It's almost like had he just poured a little bit more, it would have maybe not gotten rid of it completely, but it would have made for less uh, uh, of a giant uh, hole to fill. So I'm going to trim this down. This is the other other side I haven't done yet. I'm going to check into that. Thanks for the info, Pabs. I'm going to see if uh, I can get something like that. Something that's not noisy, you know. <laughs> There's a way to... I think that's the big thing, because I'd like to use it on something like this, but if it's just creating a shit ton of noise, it's not going to work. Not for live streams, anyway. Uh, there you go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. Cut off some of this excess. It also helps to have a sharp razor blade, too. Because you're doing some of this trimming. The dull one's just not going to work. Fortunately, like I said at the beginning of this, Joe, this, this, this stuff's pretty soft. I'm not too... I don't have a ton of experience with these kind of kits, so... I'm not sure if this is just something. This is just the way it is, you know. Is this all all garage kits made like this? Or? It reminds me of those uh, figures I had printed from Red Oak that I that I bought those uh, those 148 scale uh, carrier crew uh, from Red Oak. Those are printed in rubber composite. Now these weren't printed, obviously. They were resin cast, but that composite, it kind of has that that feel to it. So I know there's different types of resin, so but I guess in the long run it makes it easier to clean, you know, clean up these parts because you can sand it quite quickly because it is so soft. Just knocking down the back. There's a little bit of a mold, a mold line going through the back in the center of this. So just trying to make sure this is nice and smooth before I go to glue those extractors on. And then I got my razor block here. I might have to change out my sandpaper on that. It's getting a little, a little bit worn. At least I know. No. Yeah. Looks good. All right. So now we're ready to glue these two on. Get rid of this little bit of dust again. Yeah, stuff's going to be everywhere by the time I'm done. A little bit of a mold line, a little bit, not too bad on this one. Yeah, they're about the same, actually. Like I said, the barrel on one of them just has a slight, well, you can actually feel it with your fingernail, slight little mold line there that's going to be easy enough to knock down. No big deals. All right, shall we glue some stuff on? Look like we almost uh, accomplished something tonight. All right, so I'm going to get the best angle. This is square, but you know it's it's uh, it's all handmade, so it, everything has a little bit of variation. 
So I'm going to see which which fits the best, and then glue it on. I bought a George and I actually we were talking about this the, the CA glue. This one's this one's old. You can actually see the yellow coloration of it. It's getting super thick and really hard to to deal with. So I went ahead and bought a new one. I have a one ounce on Amazon, <laughs> so it's really nice using fresh glue again. And then I've also got. Uh, uh, da, da, da. It also comes with a nice little nozzle that uh, typically doesn't get stuck, clotted up with glue, but there's a little bit here in the in the bottom. But what I like about this cap is it has a needle that when you screw it down, it goes in and, and keeps that hole clear. So it doesn't get caught up on glue. That the big two ounce doesn't have that. It's just like it's just like uh, uh, squeezing through a you know a, a giant tube without having any. You know, if you get it, you get a little extra. You gotta you gotta keep clearing the hole out because the hole gets dried up with some glue in there. And I'm just using a toothpick, kind of spread this around. Nice even, even coating here. All right. Shit, I should have remembered which one was which. That's it. That's good. No, nope, let's go this way. I guess it's going to be that one. There we go. Get a little bit, a little bit of squeeze out. That's fine. Just take it off real quick. Because obviously this is not going to be as easily removed as standard glue. Once it dries, it's going to leave. one. All right, let me see how this, which side's going to fit best on this one. It's pretty good right there. So two. Yeah, that one's, that's pretty good. So we're going to go just like that. Apply a little bit of glue. It's, it's, you definitely can notice, you know, a brand new tube of glue because it, it dry, it sets so much faster than the stuff that's old. I just don't use enough of it, I guess, to. To get a big two ounce bottle anymore. I think the one ounce is fine. Little bit of a little bit of sanding, even those corners out when we're done, but that's pretty good. Okay, so um, 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 I've got two of these pins. I'm, I'm going to do this assembly real quick here just so we can see what one of the arms looks like fully assembled. So let's 
just kind of fits in there. That's a shoulder. And then there are two uh, pins. I'm not going to put these in all the way because I, 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 I got to be able to take it apart. But one of the things I did was these were molded like this with a support going up the side. You can kind of see. And so I clipped that off and I didn't sand it on purpose because it kind of adds a little bit of tension. You can take a little bit of that material off if need be, but it adds a little bit of tension for each one of these pins to stay in place. I'm only going to push them in partially. There we go. So there's an arm. So this is going to be, that's actually pretty heavy. So when that's fully installed, it's pretty good, huh? Pretty nice looking, don't you think? I think so. And because I've got that shoulder pin tight enough, I can move this out and it stays. That's what I wanted. I wanted the tension in that to be just tight enough so if I do pose this a certain way, uh, that it these joints will stay in position and not move. Like this is a little loose, but when I push those pins all the way in, it'll get tighter. Yeah, liking it. Liking it so far. Pull these pins back out. You can hear that squeaking. That's because I that, that material that's inside those holes is just creating a little bit of tension. And then this also, this is also another joint that turns too. I did the same with these. I cut those tabs off, but I didn't really sand them that much because I wanted them to fit snug enough in there that I can pose it, and those pieces will stay stay put. So I'll let those dry for a little bit, and then I'm going to. Go through and finish those edges a little bit, the corners of those. Just uh, just around the edges here to make sure those pieces are, are straight. That's all. Put this pin back. Where was the other one at? Where I put the other one? Oh, well. Oh, duh. It's in the shoulder. Stupid. There it is. All right. So, put those together. Keep those together. Put those dry. All right, next. So, the next step after you get the torso pretty much done here. Uh, let's see, is to start assembling like the legs. So we've got the front of the foot, and then we've got the two pieces on each. These are the heel, heel pieces here, and then ankle here. And we've got the ammo boxes, which go on the outside of the leg. And then the knee portions here and here. So there's quite a few pieces that, that go into this. Uh, in fact, I'll show you this while I got it here on the screen. This was that was the the rinse <laughs> everything in purple power. There's quite a few parts to this thing. That that was a, a bin about a foot long by I don't know, six or eight inches wide, filled up halfway with uh, actually three quarters of the way. Quite a bit. Quite a bit of uh, parts. Okay, so I'll go back to this screen. And here is the, let's see, right here is it, it's talking about. Um, having that open cockpit and so you can see where the, the the section that slides forward is mounted to the top of that 
those screens, the, the, base, the video screens that go in front of the cockpit or in front of the pilot. So it doesn't give you a ton of uh, visibility in the entire cockpit, but I think I can modify that slightly to, to be able to slide forward further to have a little bit more open, open view. I haven't decided either. I probably not, but there's, these are like the, the, there's a lens that goes in the knee here. And I thought about maybe trying to install an LED or something, but I really don't know how I would, where I would run the wiring or, so I'm probably just going to leave it alone. And this will be a, just an assembled build, assembled painted build without uh, lights. It'll be weathered for sure, but not, uh, not um led you know fiber optics or anything so i'm just going to take off some of this excess material before i start sanding making more dust just cut off some of these big chunks Quite a bit of this flash. Oh, there's, there's even some supports there too. Oh uh, yeah, there's one. Of, huh, this one must have broke off. I noticed he, he did use a lot of these little triangular supports for the molds, and that, that helps quite a bit. But that's just more stuff you have to remove, like this little this little tab. A little extra sanding, no big deals. Or in this case, take like a one of these chisels and just go along and just you know, easily s scrape off that extra material. What's up, Ken? Glad you could finally join us. How's it, how's it going, bud? Did you get off work on time today? I know I did. Because I do that. Every Wednesday, I make sure I leave on time. I got to get home so I can get ready for the broadcast. But. Okay, so, oops, there's one more of those tabs I gotta take off. Not too bad. I really like these chisels so far. Ooh, made it once. <laughs> How's it going, Tom? You know the East Coaster, another late night guy? I know it's hard for you guys sometimes. I try to start as early as possible, but that's over here on the West Coast. Can't start too early. People don't get home from work. Do 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 do. All right, so these I need to just straight clean up. That's just a flat sand. Nothing big there. These actually came out very well. A couple little tiny air bubbles, but nothing big. Nothing big at all. So those I'm going to kind of wait till it lasts. The feet, uh, the front of the foot anyway, it's just on the back here where they poured these in at there's a couple of air bubbles but the underneath they won't even be visible so i may not even uh worry about trying to fill those necessarily i'm gonna chunk off some of this extra though so i have less to sand 
More plastic models for macros need to be designed and made. Uh, I agree. I agree. You know what? I think, that being said, I think Hasegawa just needs to, I mean, they made such a great 148 scale Valkyrie. I want to start seeing some 148 scale battery rides. Or even, even a girl walk, you know. To me, that would be that would be awesome if they came out with a 148 girl walk. I mean, I saw there was one guy, I can't remember his name for the life of me right now, but he actually took a, a 148 Macross Valkyrie and converted it to a girl walk. And he, he painted it with the, the Myriad red paint scheme, Max and Myria, the red paint scheme, and it came out just amazing. So I just, I would love to see Hasegawa actually step up and make one. But until now, until then, they're just going to have to uh, um, make your own, you know. That's the only way to do it. I'm just trying to get a little bit of this, a little more of this off. And then I can start grinding away and move these out. All right. Get this other foot here and take off some of this extra. They need to make a 148. Yeah, you are not wrong about that. I would snatch one of those up in a second. Well, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Moscato made one at one point. But I was definitely not, at the time, that was a long time ago, too. I was definitely not in the position to buy one then, let alone buy one now. I've already spent way too much on Moscato models in the last month. So I think my Moscato purchasing days are over at this point for now. So okay, this is going to be a bit of a challenge. But I'm going to get the angle here and just slowly take off the excess. That is working nicely. I just have to be remember that this is soft, and I gotta keep 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 an eye on it and look and check my angles, make sure I'm not taking off more material than need be. And that because I'm going across the whole surface, both of these will match. You know, both sides should match if I do this right. I just gotta. I said, just make sure I'm putting pressure in the right place so it's not taken off. Too much material in one spot, on one side. I should be able to go straight across. And again, this is in the bottom of the foot, too. It's not going to be exactly visible. So if I do get a little bit wonky. I mean, I'm going to try to make it as perfect as possible, but that being said, it would be very unnoticeable if there was a slight variance. Yeah, almost there. Oh man, I'm getting those when they come out. Which one? What are you getting? They make it a 172. Who? Who's making the. Is that Hasegawa you're talking about? Because, yeah, that would be cool. I mean, I might, I'd be tempted to do that. I remember Moscato had one at one point. But. I think that 
that's going to do it. I'll finish the rest with uh, sanding. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now you can see before and after. Uh, let me just switch that around. So before and after. It looks nice. Nice nice bevel all the way across, nice and even. That's what I was going for. But again, it's going to be on the bottom of the foot. You're really, really not going to see it. And once the uh, ankle portion is glued in, in place, this will be painted a different color. So I may, uh, I may end up uh, painting these ahead of time and then just assembling it uh, once I've got that because there's going to be some some darker gray colors in the middle there along. I'm going with the, the, the tan color scheme, the traditional uh, tomahawk color scheme. Let's see, George Hasegawa is doing a... Oh, they are. Quarter one, 2024. Great. There we go again. Let's start taking my damn money. Uh, well, you know what? That's good, though. I guess because I, I, I'm not, I've, I've not been disappointed with the Macross kits from Hasegawa. I will say they are pretty damn good. And they rival Bandai's. You know, but Bandai Bandai kind of cornered the market on the, uh, the variable kits, which is something Hasegawa doesn't have, and I don't care so much about that. A lot of people don't even like the transforming kits, but I would just like to see more options with the 148 line, other than just Valkyries. You know, armored or not, I mean they're they're nice kits, but that's all they do. It's, it's like make something in a and a battery like 148. I mean, that you know how fast I would buy that. <laughs> Maybe no question how quickly that would be sold. So I'm just doing the, the back of this other foot again, the other foot now. So once I get it even. Oh god, a 148 monster? That would fill up this entire table. God. Yeah, that's a dream. But I think if you're gonna make one like if you're gonna build a 148 monster, it's gonna have to be your own your own construction. I think there's just no other way around it. Because that's so massive. I mean this is a 148 district. This is the feet of this uh, tomahawk. The feet on that 148 monster would probably be that. I mean, that would be as big as my table, I think. I'm just guessing on the scale, but it's got to be something close to that. Because as of now, I think Bandai only makes a 140, or no, excuse me, a 1, one 100. They don't even make a 172. Even that's too big. Okay, I think I got both of these sanded down nicely. A little bit of cleanup here. I'll take a 1 100, please. Yeah. <laughs> ask uh, ask Bro Builder. I think he's got the one I sold him. I sold him a 1 1 100 monster. A couple of years back, or about a year ago, I think. Yeah, there was that. There was a time where I was struggling to pay some doctor bills, so I had to kind of forfeit some of my kits to some of the guys that wanted them, just to kind of 
help pay for stuff, you know, as it, as it is, as it were. And um, I'm going to need a, I think I'm going to have to get a wire brush, this toothbrush. It's starting to struggle getting all that resin out of that pile. I think it's fine as long as I do it more often. If I if I wait too long, then it gets too much in the file and it won't clear it out. But I'll just grab one one from work. I've got some little handheld wire brushes that'll take out that extra. You can kind of see it in there, stuck in the grooves. That'll get rid of it. No problems. No problem at all. Okay. What's next? I have these two. Well, let me look over these. There's a couple little mold lines here, but again, this is on the bottom, so I'm not too worried about it. I know I probably should be. But I'm not going to see it. Whatever. We'll take it off anyway. Let's go for perfection. Oh, I know. Careful with the resin dust. I'm right there with you. That's why I'm uh, disposing of it in shifts. You know, as I make make a little bit of dust, I get rid of it. We were talking about that earlier about how to deal with that. And there's maybe some stuff that uh, nail salons use for. Extracting dust for from doing like acrylic nails and stuff like that, and I might try to uh, integrate something like that into my room here. If it's not too noisy, obviously it wouldn't work on the live streams if it was just ridiculously noisy. I could say something like, I'm not going to be around long enough to worry about resin dust. I'm old. <laughs> right, George? You, know, you ought to see the work environment I work in. I work on cars all day long. I've been doing that for 30 years. I breathe more dirt and crap doing that. Sprinkle this resin dust on my corn plates. Old these days is 80? <laughs> okay. I'm not there yet. I don't think George is even close to that either. Only a few years older than me. We're still in our fifties, but dun, dun, dun. trying to clean up these uh, the sides you are going to see just to make sure there's no mold lines on anything there one thing I did notice there I don't know if it it almost looks like the details like the raised details were glued on after the mold was made I mean I know it, it wasn't but the funny thing is, is that you can see the shiny like there's a there's a gloss ring around each one of these pieces like from where the glue was and it shows up in the mold like 
almost like it was glued on after, like I said. But, uh, getting down there, getting close to the end of the show. We're going to push on for at least another 10 more minutes or so. And this one's a little bit cleaner than the other. But uh, the ankle portion here, that will be gray, a grayish color. This is also going to be the front vent here will be that same color. And then there will be, I haven't decided on the color. I think I might use, let's see, let's talk about colors right now. Why not? So this is uh, 310 Brown, FS30219, whatever, U.S. Air Force F4. I guess that says F4, F100, etc. I'm wondering if that might be the color, the body color to use. Um, I've got other browns as well. I've got number 19. This is what I used on the uh, Abrams, which is a sandy brown, but I think this might be a little too light. So I'm thinking 310 now. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah, I hear? Later, Tom. Sorry, I didn't see that right away. Have a good night, bud. Thanks for joining in. I appreciate you. So 310 or, or 19 sandy brown, you know what you think. I don't really have any others that are just tan color. They're more like a, a mustardy, sandy yellow. So I think those might be the two best choices to go forward with. Could see on this, but I think I'm going to wait for... Let me look at this. There's that one. There's, this one's got a nasty air bubble. Let's see if I can fix that. Either one would look good, huh? Yeah, I suppose. Trying to stay close to a lot of the stock photos that I've seen, you know, for various, whether it be the Bandai version or, or the Wave version, you know, just trying to stay close to. I'll give you an example. I'll show you what, uh, it's on my phone here. So this is a couple of photos that I, Actually, looking at this, it's actually quite a bit lighter. So this is uh, one of the photos I just found online. And I think that might actually be the wave. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of trying to, to stick to, is that. So that's a little bit more of a softer tan color. So I may have to rethink that when I look at what I, what I have in my collection of paints. I've got plenty of colors. I know I'll find one that will work. Yeah, this has got quite a big quite a big air bubble. And unfortunately these are going to be visible so I have to have to address it. It's on the top of that heel portion so I actually want to wait for a second. Half a second because there's this other one that is just ugly. I mean look at that. Massive, massive air hole. Fortunately, it doesn't affect the pin, which, which the heel, you know, goes into that. Uh, when you look at this, the ankle portion here, these fit right in here like that. One on each side. I think the orientation is wrong. So this will be like this and then this. It's like that, but you can see that giant gaping hole right there. That that's going to be totally visible, so I've got to fill that. But I think that's too big for CA glue. It may not be. I might try using some of the thicker stuff that's already, you know, the stuff I was talking about already that's kind of dried up. And uh, the shitty part is it's going to take quite a bit of sanding to get all these, to repair all these edges because there's so many different angles to that piece and now that I've cut off all the extra plastic that, that this is or the resin it's a, you see that giant hole not happy about that but fortunately that's the only one the other two just have small or non-existent this one doesn't even really have anything at all but this one's also got an air bubble in the top and it's just like you know air bubbles happen with resin casts but there's ways to prevent it and I think 
had he just put these in a pressure pot, it's a little extra step, but be surprised how much different this would look without the air bubbles. Knock down that. Okay. Actually, you know what? That resin might actually work as a catalyst. I could uh, just pop some glue right in the middle of that. I think that might actually work. Put the nozzle back on here. I'm going to do the same on top of this one. Get a little bit of resin dust in that hole, and then I also did one thing. I did buy I'm talking about you know the the bigger bottles of glue, and I bought the small one, but I did get this big giant eight ounce bottle Insta Set because I know I'll use all that for sure. So I'm just going to see if that helps kind of fill those holes. Some CA. Let's see that one. This one doesn't really have one. Let's see what we got here. It might. No, I guess not. It almost looks like they're it was trying to. Uh, form a bubble there because that seems to be the same spot that each one of these had an air bubble on but there's no actual hole there yeah I think we're good I think that one's okay all right so now that those are filled with glue I want to take my little Bottle of Insta Set. Yep, just give this a little drop. Each one. I may have to put a little bit more in there. Once that cures, it might shrink quite a bit. Okay. Right, my friends, it's getting about that time. So, what did we do today? What did we accomplish? We talked about completed uh, M1A1 Abrams, and then you know most of this the torso portion is assembled. So some of the little pieces still got to go in, but I'll probably end up uh, painting some of those first. But I think as a as a piece like this, I could probably get away with priming this and, and and painting it. Gosh, that came out really crooked, didn't it? I noticed, too, like the supports are a little bit, one of them was, was quite quite a bit different angle. It's almost like the way, because he, he, he handcrafted this thing. It's awful. He's hand sculpted, so all the angles are almost perfect, but there are some little, I'm not too, too concerned about it. You're not going to notice it once it's fully assembled so but i can probably get away with uh priming this piece as it is this big chunk of the the, the torso here and then doing the same on some of these other sections that you know that i'm going to paint and then assemble later so sandy yellow is a very good desert color yeah that's true i do have that let's see i think that one is this is dark sandy yellow number 39 so that's a an option um, but i may end up going actually something like this this might be closer in line to what i just showed you this is light brown number 321 so it's a little bit lighter lighter color so i might just put them all down try some do some samples maybe and and, and figure that out so but in the meantime 
everybody. Oops. I didn't mean to touch that. I touched my mouse pad there. Thank you, everyone that joined in and helped uh, make this show a success tonight. Appreciate each and every one of you. Um, thanks for joining in. Thanks for, for talking. Thanks for participating in the chat. Everybody, be good humans. We'll talk to you next week. Call your call your mom, call your dad. <laughs> Hug your family members. You never know when they're they might be gone, you know. That's always that's been my the last thing I always end these shows with is like call your mom and dad. <laughs> Tell them you love them. Because you know what? Eventually they're gonna be gone and you know, we all miss them. We all miss them. So again, thanks again for coming. Be good humans. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks again, George. You betcha. Fun night. Everybody, have a good time. We'll talk to you soon.